my goodness, what an incredible night. I'm honored to be here, home away from home, uh, where my grandmother lived, my father grew up as a purple, where he met my mom at WKU, and then eventually where I met the love of my life, Tiffany, at Western Kentucky. Look, this is a treat. I hope you don't take this for granted. You know, all of us can attest, we travel this state, we do a lot of these. Tonight is really special. Uh, it is a great night and a great time to be a Republican in Kentucky. Let's not take it for granted, let's keep rocking. I'm gonna tell you tonight a little bit about who I am as a person. I'm gonna tell you about what we've done and I wanna tell you about where we can take Kentucky. The two most important things to me are my faith and my family. I'm an unapologetic Christian. I was saved at 12 years old. But what makes America so special is I get to walk into this room tonight and share my faith, and I know I have friends here as well who practice a different one. And praise God, whichever God, for the freedom of religion and liberty in this country, I'll fight to defend theirs as well as my own forever. The second most important thing to me is my family. Man, I'm blessed. People talk about marrying up. I certainly did. I've been married to Tiffany, a first-generation college student from Louisville who had a dream to go to Vanderbilt to be a pediatric ER nurse. She chased that, then wanted to become a mom, now an entrepreneur. I'm so fortunate to have her standing by my side. We have three daughters, Olivia, Oakley, and Olson. They're 10, 8, and 5. I always say, praise the Lord, they look like their mama. But it is awesome uh, to get to be their dad and to get to hopefully show them a path where, yeah, you're climbing a tough mountain. Look, this is a field full of what I'm going to say giants, uh, great candidates who have accomplished a lot in life. Uh, but so has the mayor of Somerset. I'll say with humility, I've been fortunate to see and do a lot in my time. Kentucky will elect a CEO this fall. I think all of us would agree that the one that we have in office who has never built a team, never led at a high level before getting this job, needs replaced. I served in the private sector, uh, a fourth generation entrepreneur and businessman, and I learned from my father, who borrowed every, every dollar that he could uh, against the wishes and the wills of a lot of people, uh, to build a recycling company, uh, a recycling company that was started in the mid-80s. We grew it to over 100 employees, doing business in 20 states. I learned so many things in my private life. The need to build a team, surround yourself with folks who have skills that you don't. Wouldn't it be nice to have some leaders in this country who listened, who surrounded themselves with people that had gifts that they didn't have and acknowledged it openly? I learned the stresses of making a payroll. And I took so many of those lessons and more to the city of Somerset, where I campaigned to transform my hometown. Somerset, like Kentucky, was stale and stagnant. It was struggling in so many ways, but I'm proud to stand before you tonight and say that in four short years, two of which were embattled with COVID, we had record revenue, record job creation, record private business investment, record female entrepreneurs in our downtown without raising a single tax. Historic progress by empowering others and leaning into who we are. But the reality for the rest of the Commonwealth maybe northern Kentucky, Bowling Green, and a few other places aside, we're struggling. We have to have an honest conversation about where we are as a commonwealth. 48th in fiscal stability, 48th, 49th in workforce, 48th in median income, 44th in health care outcomes, leading America in diabetes and heart disease. We're not doing well. And as proud conservatives, we have to start asking ourselves, not just in Kentucky, but as a country, what are we conserving? Are we more free? Are we more safe? Are we more prosperous than the generation that came before us? And if the answer is no, then perhaps we need to do something a little different. And that's the kind of game plan that we're bringing to this race. An executive that's going to lead and listen with humility but knows how to get things done. A common sense, do something candidate. The Keck game plan is not rocket science. In many ways, it's simple but can be profound. We're going to kickstart our economy by putting people back to work, not paying people to sit at home. Instead, take care of our working poor, solving that workforce participation crisis. Yes, we're going to invest in public safety. And, man, we need to. Kentucky has never been more unsafe. It crushes me what happened in Louisville. And as a party, we can't throw our hands up and say it's a mental health issue and decide we're going to move on. We need to lead the conversation. And no, it's not about taking guns. If we're going to talk about mental health, then let's invest in it. Let's make sure that instead of red flag laws, we invest in those that need clinical inpatient treatment and they never have to leave the Commonwealth to get it. Let's also not wait for another tragedy in a nearby state to keep our kids safe. We're going to invest in education. We're going to get to our kids sooner. 
And yes, we're going to promote some of those trade schools. We're also going to promote school choice because we, we don't have to decide between honoring and supporting and thanking our public school teachers and giving folks the freedom to choose. And then finally, we're going to lead America in pro-family policy, the conversation for Christian conservatives in this country, for Republicans on life can't stop at birth. We need proactive policies where we incentivize behaviors that we want more of instead of rewarding those we don't. Kentucky can lead the way in pro-family policy. My name's Alan Keck. I'd be honored for your consideration. Look at the fruit in our life, and please make a decision. Thank you, and God bless each of you.